Joining me now here on the MMA Report is a man who's coming off a decision victory this past week at UFC on ESPN3, Vince from Hell, Pichelle. Vince, uh, appreciate the time. Uh, you go out there, you get the victory. Uh, you know, first time we had seen you in a while. I know John Anik on the broadcast was was talking about some of the injuries you, you had had and, and dealing with those. I mean, uh, leading into this fight, like how would you describe the, the past year leading up to this one? Uh, the past year for me, I mean, wasn't too bad. I would say it was like a, if I could use a good analogy, I would say it was like a residential street with some real shitty speed bumps on it. Like, <laughs> it wasn't too bad, you know what I mean? Like, you could always just gas it over speed bumps, but they were definitely there slowing me down a little bit. But, but you go out there and you get the victory. And I was watching your, your post-fight uh, you know, chat that you had with the media, and uh, I thought it was really interesting the reaction you had when they talked about you being the betting underdog and uh, people doubting you, which I'm sure that that's happened throughout your career. Uh, is that yeah. just more motivation than anything else? To be honest, I didn't really know I was the underdog until afterwards, until almost fight time, because people were like, oh, I'm going to put some money on you. I'm like, oh, cool. I'll put some money. They're like, yeah, you're a big underdog. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm the underdog? I was like, whatever, man. People people are dumb. <laughs> but I feel like I've I was, I was, I've been an underdog a lot, you know. Uh, I was a big underdog in the Andrew Kwani fight. I don't know what I was against Damian Brown or against Joaquin Silva. Um, I know I was definitely an underdog, underdog against Gregor. Um. But it doesn't. I don't know. It doesn't really bother me. Um, I kind of like being the underdog. I bet money on myself, so I make myself some extra cash when I do do that. This is the one time I didn't get to bet on myself because I didn't have an opportunity or a place where I could where I was. So that kind of sucks. But uh, I made a lot of people a lot of money, and uh, you're welcome, everyone. <laughs> yeah, anyone anyone that watches my my DraftKings <laughs> show knows that I, I pointed to you a, as a value play, and uh, I'm sure you made a lot of people uh, some money on, on Saturday night. Uh, you know, one of the things I always like to ask guys after a fight's over, there, there's things you can see on film leading up to a fight that that tell you something about the fighter. Was there anything about Roosevelt that surprised you? Um. I thought he was going to be a little better at taking me down. I thought his I thought his takedowns were going to be a little better than they were, to be honest. Um, I knew he was fast. I knew he was going to hit me a few times. You know what I mean? Just because of his speed is just pretty easy. He's a very fast guy. But guys that are that fast don't have power, so I wasn't really afraid of it. I just knew that I'd get I'd get hit a couple times by his by his speed. So that didn't really surprise me. Um, he didn't throw really many kicks either. Uh, I felt like he was going to throw a lot more kicks at me. He didn't. Um, I was expecting that too. Maybe he just, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm very good at defending kicks and, and uh, making people regret kicking me. So maybe that's why. But uh, just basically that, him not throwing as many kicks as I thought he was going to do and uh, lack of uh, lack of him taking me down. I thought he was going to be a lot better taking me down. You know, the, the one good take that he had was when I made a mistake by grabbing him, grabbing him by the neck like a dumb shit because I didn't feel like – I didn't feel like he had a good enough grip on me that he could lift me right there. I thought his, I didn't think his hands were locked. So I grabbed around his neck and he lifted me like, and got me. So that surprised me a little bit, but other than that, um, no, is it, it was, I did, so I did, I did good scouting on him. So I wasn't really too surprised by anything else besides those things. You know, when the fight started, you, you exchanged those leg kicks. Do you maybe think of, of you firing back the leg kick? Maybe got him a question. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't go this route. Oh, his legs are fucked up. I for sure, I for sure, he's limping for sure. I, I uh, put some heavy leg kicks on him. But uh, it could have been, you know, it, it could have been that. I'm not sure how bad they affected him. He honestly has a really good poker face. Um, I am, and I pride myself very much on this, but I am very good at reading people. And I knew he was tired in the second, half of the second. I knew he was really worn out and tired and he was done. But when we got into the third, I couldn't, I couldn't feel that from him. You know what I mean? And, and he's very good. He was, that's, that was one thing I actually surprised me too. He's very good at this poker face. He's very good at, at um, disguising if he's hit, hurt or tired or, or things like that. Cause I'm very good at reading that from people. Uh, after the fight's over, I'm sure you probably had a chance to go uh -huh. back and watch the fight a couple of times already. I know you mentioned about not getting that guillotine that you were looking for. Oh, um, man. But, so <laughs> was, was there anything else about the fight that you, you just, you kick yourself about and say, man, there was an opening here and I just missed it. Yeah. In the second, um, I wish I had like 10 more seconds in the end of the round. But, uh, when I was on top, I was kind of. I was putting a lot of weight on him, wearing him out, basically trying to move me with my weight um, and my strength and dropping, you know, just putting weight on him and dropping elbows on him. 
Um, what I should have did is is kind of got more to a posture position to start bombing, just just exploding punches on him. I probably would have got the finish. Um, that's one thing. That's one thing I wish I would have done differently in the fight. Is just instead of being slow and and methodical with with slowing him down and wearing him out and hurting him, I should have just got explosive and and started wailing on him and, and got the finish. I should have got a little more greedy. <laughs> Is there something in the fight that you, you really, uh, you know, you, you pat yourself on the back about, you know, what you maybe something you were working on in the training room that um, you were able to accomplish on fight night? Um, just leg kicks and my head movement. Um, I practiced a lot of my head movement because I knew he was fast and I wasn't, you know, I knew a lot of times I would and I fought with my hands down. My coach is bitching me all the time, but I don't give a fuck. I'm not changing the way I fight. But I knew I was going to get hit a few times, so I practiced a lot of my head movement, um, getting very decent on my head movement, making sure that I can't get hit too often. When I do get hit, it's just a grazing shot. It's nothing too major. As you can see, I don't have any marks on my face even from the fight. And he did. He tagged me up a few times. So um, just that and uh, just that, and honestly, like lifting and getting more explosive power back, um, trying to keep my body young, <laughs> taking care of my body, trying to keep myself young. You know what I mean? Because I'm 36 and he was 25. And you know who looked like they were 25 in that fight look who looked yeah. like they were 36 so you mentioned after the fight about you know what what this meant for your contract and and i also thought it was interesting where you said you felt this was a make or break moment for you um people could take that in a way of saying well maybe if vince thought he didn't get the win you know maybe you know the time is coming to an end was that even part of the uh, thought process oh no no the make or break thing for me was that was a that was the last fight of my contract so uh, before this fight, uh, we talked to Shelby, and he was like, "You want me? You want me? Rene- this is your last fight. You want to renegotiate a contract now?" And I told him no. I said no because I wanted to whoop this kid, and I want to do it in 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 a good fashion, and I wanted to have some more buying power with the next contract. <laughs> so that's the aspect that was in my head, and the aspect that I was considering in my head when I said that. That was it was a make or break because I would either have a lot of. Uh, a lot of talking power my next contract or i wouldn't have so much because i'd be on the two fight losing streak and shit might even been cut you know what i mean i, I doubt they would cut me because they like me and you know what i mean in my fighting style and stuff and i'm down to fight whoever so i didn't think that was i didn't really honestly think they would cut me but if i whooped this kid in, in a good fashion like i did i knew i'd have a lot more buying power and i did and um it all worked out because i got what i wanted yeah, I mean, it seems more and more fighters are kind of saying, you know what, I'm just going to bet on myself here. You know, I'm yeah. going to go out here and win and give myself a little bit of bargaining power. Uh, you know, so when obviously you 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 start to work on that new contract. Is there a timetable when you want your next fight to be? Uh, as soon as possible. I'm not banged up at all. You know, I'm not hurt. I have no injuries from the fight, nothing like that. My nose is a little clogged, so I don't know if it's from him popping me in the nose a couple times or if it's just allergies or I'm getting fat because I'm actually eating decent food now. But uh, <laughs> wait a couple of weeks, see how this goes, um, and get right back out there. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not looking to take any kind of break. I quit work and I quit school so I could dedicate all my time to fighting. Um, so that's, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to dedicate all my time to fighting until, until I, the wheels fall off this thing and I retire. In terms of making that decision, was it all a tough decision to say, you know what, I'm going to put everything else on the side burner. Let's just concentrate on this. Yeah, it was very tough. It was very tough. And I was, I don't want to say like ridiculously stressed out from it, but it, it brought a lot of stress onto me. But uh, it was a good, healthy stress. Um, it wasn't like overbearing stress, like, fuck, what am I going to do with my life? You know what I mean? Like, it's not like that. Because to be honest, I'm winging my life anyway. And that's the way I've always done it. I don't know what the, what the hell I'm going to do before or after fighting. You know what I mean? That's just the way I am. I'm, I'm just, I'm a good roll to punches kind of guy. So, uh, I did have a little bit of pressure on that and it, it was super stressful and and I was super worried, but I just said, you know what? Fuck it. The best things that, that I've ever gotten and, and been through in life are when I was kind of, I had my back against the wall and just did what I felt I had to do to, to accomplish my goals. So that's what I did. I just did that again, you know what I mean? And, and, and it paid out. It always pays out. So. I mean, as you look kind of at the, this landscape in the division, I mean, is it more of just like send me a name in, in the contract or is there maybe a particular name you want next? I don't really have anyone in general that I, that I you know, particularly want to fight. Um, I've been trying to fight Al again for, for the while, longest time because me and him fought an ultimate fighter. 
and I was injured when I actually went into the fight with him and he knew and he took advantage of it. So he told me he'd give me a rematch, but he's been dodging me ever since. I don't think he's going to do it, which is kind of a smart move on his part because um, I'll beat that ass. But um, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't really have anyone. I'm just, I'm just going to tell Shelby, give me a few names, and then uh, I wanna, I'll want i pick who I, who I feel would be an exciting fight for the fans. You know what I mean? Because I'm not like there's a lot of fighters that pick fights that they feel is good for them. And I'm not that guy. I don't care if the fight's good or bad for me. I want to. I want to challenge myself, and I honestly pick fights that I feel I'm going to lose. That I feel like I have more of a chance of losing, honestly. So when I picked that Gregor fight, that's what I had in my head. When I picked the Njikwani fight, that's what I had in my head. Um, even Silva, I thought Silva. Silva had a good chance of knocking me out with his fighting style, but when I fought him, he he was kind of running from me a little bit the whole time. But that that's my mentality when I pick fights. I I fight against dudes who I feel would be a tough fight that I, that I have a very high chance of losing because not only is that a good motivator for me and then also if I win it's even it's even better for me but just gives me that just gives me that uh that accomplishment that I that I overcame something that in my head I didn't fully believe I can overcome you know what I mean like it, nothing feels better than than doing something you didn't think you could actually do and we can see the hat there uh with your nickname can, can the fans uh you know purchase that anywhere if they want to buy one? Um, this is my only one I have. The company that I make my shirts actually made this hat just for me. I had no idea they made it. But I am going to have more made. And if I do have more made, they're going to be on my website, which is from helpashell.com. So um, I guess just keep checking my website. In the next month here, they'll be up there because I am going to have some made and I'm going to sell hats. And where can everybody follow you on social media if there's any sponsors that have been helping you out for this one? Uh, my social medias are all the same. It's all from Help a Shell. My Twitter, my Instagram, uh, my Facebook, my YouTube. It's all from Help a Shell. Um, I also have a mixer account. I'm a streamer. I love video games, so I, I play video games and stream. I actually uh, just did a stream yesterday, watching my fight back for the first time with commentary uh, on the fight with everyone watching and stuff. So if you guys want to have a mixer account, go to Mixer. It's it's a platform just like Twitch. Um, but go on there, find me on there from help a show. You could watch it there. You know what I mean? I'm always streaming. So you could always jump in, hang out with me, ask me questions when I'm streaming too. Um, thank you to my sponsors, of course. Um, Lana's egg whites, smoke buddy, rev gear. Um, I just picked up a new sponsor. Um, we work with, um, miss Mary Jane's edibles, uh, uh, miss Mary Jane. So they're gonna be a new sponsor. I'm kind of excited to, to start working with them now. Um, I want to thank Trifecta big time for uh, doing all my meal prepping and stuff for the fight, uh, keep my weight down, keep me nice and healthy. Um, Every one of the, uh, the P performance institute, UFC performance institute, all those people. And uh, everyone that bought shirts off me, tanks on the website, and, and of course my coaches and training partners. Um, my coaches and training partners are the reason why I'm as good as I am as a fighter and, and where I am where I am, I am where I am today. So huge thank you to those guys.